Soy sauce brewery. Right, first of all, the soy sauce is five ingredients, soybeans, wheat, salt, water, yeast. Our sixth ingredient would be the barrel. But in order to get our koji started, we have to cook the beans and make them soft. We roast the wheat, and we crack it, we blend those together, and then we introduce the yeast. And we'll incubate it in this room for about three days. You know, for a while we had to cultivate our own. Um, but it's, a, it's, it's much better, easier when we're buying out of Tokyo. So this is a, a filter? Like it a is a mesh screen so that it can breathe. Wow. These are koji, I had these built. So originally we were doing them traditionally Japanese boxes. You know, and they have a special name. Um, but as we scale, it was, you know, when, when you have hundreds of them, it's hard. You know who Mark Pittman is? I, he wrote an article in Condé Nast Traveler in 2004 called Japan's Liquid Gold, and it was a comparison contrast story of the U.S. expectation of soy sauce versus what the Japanese. I called the New York Times. And I was like, may I speak with Mark Bittman? And they were like, yeah, one second. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Straight through him. I talked to him on two occasions for almost an hour each time. He shared all his notes, all his pictures uh, from that article that he wrote. And he said to me, because I told him how I was going to do it, and he was like, why don't you just use the bourbon barrel? And it wasn't that I hadn't thought of it. I just thought it was too expected and cliche. And uh, he was like, it completes your story. And he was like, you're right. It also solved a huge problem I had because I couldn't afford the kettle that would fill one of those cypress tanks. So, but from here, we'll go into one of these tanks. We used to uh, stir it with like a cement mixer. Oh, it's like it's too violent <laughs> by hand. So one of the things he told me, uh, the first thing he told me was, he asked what I did with the water that we cooked the beans in. And it was like down the drain and he was like, no, you saved that, that's flavor. Look at the color of the water. And so that's what we make our brine out of. We save all the water that we cook the beans in. We make the brine in here. And then once the koji is mature, it will go into that brine. And it becomes a mash. The Japanese word for mash is morami. Um, for the first six to eight weeks, we will stir every single day, trying to keep that yeast active and alive for as long as we can. The salt is in soy sauce for a reason. And it controls the environment during fermentation and aging and it'll eventually kill the yeast. Uh, after that, we just stir several times a week just to help develop flavor, keep it, keep it moving. Um, the soybeans and the wheat will denature over time, completely break down. Uh, soy sauce, when it is naturally brewed, is done in a minimum six months. Uh, the super premium varieties in Japan, like with Toshio, they're 12 to 18 months. Uh, and so it's, you know, it's, it takes some time. Whereas I used to just say, all right, this, this has been in here 12 months, let's press it. Now we take samples, we taste it, but we also send it out to get tested. So you can quantify umami. Yes. Yeah. What is the unit of measure? So there's a nitrogen content and proteins. So oh. for nitrogen. Oh, that's so like yeah. fish sauce. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know, we're out of soy sauce right now because it didn't, the results didn't come back where we've set our bar for the bluegrass soy sauce. If you come up here, you see a uh, big difference. So this one went in a week ago. Okay, you can see how active it is. Yeah, bubbling. The CO2 escaping. Um, I bet when the guys came in here, it was bubbling towards the top, like trying to come over, I can see. Um, it's like bread, it rises. And so we have to help those gases escape. Now this one over here is, uh, this is our double fermented, but it is about, I'd say 15 months in there. And you can see how much the soybeans and wheat have So how much longer does this one have? Well, TBD. Oh, you, you have know, to decide. By the calendar, it'd be 18 months. It was to figure out how to get the soy sauce out of that. Um, I originally, um, I, I took these plans off the internet for a cider press. Okay. And my dad built it. And then he built one a slight, slightly larger. And then Kenzilla, which you'll see, it looks very similar to, to Shio's. Um, but this piece is mobile. So we will wheel this out in front of whichever tank we're emptying. And just like you saw his, there's several hundred layers, three separate stacks. 
uh, of the match, and he actually set up this for me. So he called his guy in Tokyo. It's essentially a, a soy sauce manufacturing supply store. Okay. So this is Daycron. I used to buy bolts of muslin at Joanne Fabrics and cut it to size, but this uh, he, this will last me ten years. Uh, it's very porous but very strong and not absorbent at all. So once we press the soy out of the mash, uh, you know, it goes into the barrel for about four weeks. Now the barrels are nice and wet, freshly dumped. They had bourbon in them. Uh, given the town that we're in, there's been a lot of research done on, you know, flavor transfer in used barrels, like repurposed barrels. And so usually that flavor comes out within two to four weeks. And it's Woodford, Woodford Reserve. You always use theirs? We use a lot of Woodford. Nice. Yeah. And that's cool how it's leaking here. It looks like an old balsamic. Uh, how, when they age the balsamic, it's always leaking out of the barrels. And... If you're careful, you can pull one of these off and, and eat it. It's like an umami stick. An umami stalactite, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's the stalagmites. century barn. Oh wow, that's intense. None of these are running right now. Guys, and this whole operation is done with two guys. This pepper. This one is a bit more sensitive to smoke than something like salt or spices. There's a moisture content. Those essential oils that are in there. The, the oils are what suck in the smoke. And once they're saturated, they're not going to get any smoky. We might change the color a little bit, but you know, it, uh, it's those oils that suck in the flavor. But also, that moisture content will evaporate if we make the oven too hot. Seeing the value in a smoked sesame seed, you know, when it's just thought of as just some commodity thing. Uh, but I love cooking with it. Like the oils How do you use there, it? I put it in everything from salads to crusting proteins, putting it on vegetables, mm -hmm. um, it uh, soups. It just, that smoke comes out so well. Those oils just suck it in. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites. And the soy sauce already is like an umami bomb, and so adding the smoke to it, I've uh, got to be a little sensitive so that it doesn't start to taste, you know, like a campfire. This is the brother? Yeah, I had a great time. Colonel Sanders' brother. <laughs>